French art consists of the visual and plastic arts including architecture, woodwork, textiles, and ceramics originating from the geographical area of France. Modern France was the main centre for the European art of the Upper Paleolithic, then left many megalithic monuments, and in the Iron Age many of the most impressive finds of early Celtic art. The Gallo-Roman period left a distinctive provincial style of sculpture, and the region around the modern Franco-German border led the empire in the mass production of finely decorated ancient Roman pottery, which was exported to Italy and elsewhere on a large scale. With Merovingian art the story of French styles as a distinct and influential element in the wider development of the art of Christian Europe begins. France can fairly be said to have been a leader in the development of Romanesque art and Gothic art, before the Renaissance led to Italy becoming the main source of stylistic developments until France matched Italy's influence during the Rococo and Neoclassicism periods and then regained the leading role in the arts from the 19th to the mid-20th century. Historic overview Prehistory Currently, the earliest known European art is from the Upper Paleolithic period of between 40,000 and 10,000 years ago and France has a large selection of extant prehistoric art from the Châtelperonian, Aurignacian, Salutrian, Gravettian, and Magdalenian cultures. This art includes cave paintings, such as the famous paintings at Peck Merle in the lot in Languedoc which date back to 16,000 BC, Lascaux, located near the village of Montagnac, in the Dordogne, dating back to between 13,000 and 15,000 BC, or perhaps, as far back as 25,000 BC, the Cosker Cave, the Chauvet Cave dating back to 29,000 BC, and the Trois Frères Cave, and portable art, such as animal carvings and great goddess statuettes called Venus figurines, such as the Venus of Brassempoy, of 21,000 BC, discovered in the lands, now in the museum at the Château de Saint-Germain-en-Laye or the Venus of Lespugue at the Musée de l'Homme. Ornamental beads, bone pins, carvings, as well as flint and stone arrowheads also are among the prehistoric objects from the area of France. Speculations exist that only Homo sapiens are capable of artistic expression, however, a recent find, the Mask of La Roche Cotard, a Mousterian or Neanderthal artifact, found in 2002 in a cave near the banks of the Loire River, dating back to about 33,000 BC, now suggests that Neanderthal humans may have developed a sophisticated and complex artistic tradition. In the Neolithic period, see Neolithic Europe, megalithic large stone monuments, such as the Dolmens and Menhirs at Carnac, Saint Sulpice de Failurens, and elsewhere in France begin to appear. This appearance is thought to start in the 5th millennium BC, although some authors speculate about Mesolithic roots. In France, there are some 5,000 megalithic monuments, mainly in Brittany, where there is the largest concentration of these monuments. In this area there is wide variety of these monuments that have been well preserved, like Menhirs, Dolmen, Cromleches and Cairns. The Cairn of Gavrinis in southern Brittany is an outstanding example of megalithic art, its 14 metres inner corridor is nearly completely adorned with ornamental carvings. The great broken Menhir of ur -Gras, now in four pieces was more than 20 metres high originally, making it the largest Menhir ever erected. France has also numerous painted stones, polished stone axes, and inscribed menhirs from this period. The Grand Presigny area was known for its precious silex blades and they were extensively exported during the Neolithic. In France from the Neolithic to the Bronze Age, one finds a variety of archaeological cultures, including the Rossin culture of c. 4500-4000 BC, Beaker culture of c. 2800-1900 BC, Tumulus culture of c. 1600-1200 BC, Urnfield culture of c. 1300-800 BC, and, in a transition to the Iron Age, Hallstatt culture of c. 1200-500 BC. For more on prehistoric sites in western France, see Prehistory of Brittany. Celtic and Roman periods From the Proto-Celtic Urnfield and Hallstatt cultures, a continental Iron Age Celtic art developed, mainly associated with La Tène culture, which flourished during the late Iron Age from 450 BC to the Roman conquest in the 1st century BC. This art drew on native, classical and perhaps, the Mediterranean, Oriental sources. 
The Celts of Gaul are known through numerous tombs and burial mounds found throughout France. Celtic art is very ornamental, avoiding straight lines and only occasionally using symmetry, without the imitation of nature nor ideal of beauty central to the classical tradition, but apparently, often involves complex symbolism. This artwork includes a variety of styles and often incorporates subtly modified elements from other cultures, an example being the characteristic over and under interlacing which arrived in France only in the 6th century, although it was already used by Germanic artists. The Celtic VIX grave in present-day Burgundy revealed the largest bronze crater of the antiquity, that was probably imported by Celtic aristocrats from Greece. The region of Gaul Latin, Gallia, came under the rule of the Roman Empire from the 1st century BC to the 5th century AD. Southern France, and especially Provence and Languedoc, is known for its many intact Gallo-Roman monuments. Lugdunum, modern Lyon, was at the time of the Roman Empire the largest city outside Italy and gave birth to two Roman emperors. The city still boasts some Roman remains including a theatre. Monumental works from this period include the amphitheatre in Orange, Vaucluse, the Maison Carré, at Nimes which is one of the best preserved Roman temples in Europe, the city of Vienne near Lyon, which features an exceptionally well-preserved temple the Temple of Augustus and Livia, a circus as well as other remains, the Pont du Gard aqueduct which is also in an exceptional state of preservation, the Roman cities of Glenum and Vaison la Romaine, two intact Gallo-Roman arenas in Nimes and Arles, and the Roman Baths, and the Arena of Paris. Medieval period <inaudible> Merovingian art Merovingian art is the art and architecture of the Merovingian dynasty of the Franks, which lasted from the 5th century to the 8th century in present-day France and Germany. The advent of the Merovingian dynasty in Gaul during the 5th century led to important changes in the arts. In architecture, there was no longer the desire to build robust and harmonious buildings. Sculpture regressed to being little more than a simple technique for the ornamentation of sarcophagi, altars, and ecclesiastical furniture. On the other hand, the rise of gold work and manuscript illumination brought about a resurgence of Celtic decoration, which, with Christian and other contributions, constitutes the basis of Merovingian art. The unification of the Frankish kingdom under Clovis I and his successors, corresponded with the need to build churches. The plans for them probably were copied from Roman basilicas. Unfortunately, these timber structures have not survived because of destruction by fire, whether accidental or caused by the Normans at the time of their incursions. Carolingian art. Carolingian art is the approximate 120-year period from 750 to 900, during the reign of Charles Martel, Pippin the Younger, Charlemagne, and his immediate heirs, popularly known as the Carolingian Renaissance. The Carolingian era is the first period of the medieval art movement known as pre-Romanesque. For the first time, northern European kings patronized classical Mediterranean Roman art forms, blending classical forms with Germanic ones, creating entirely new innovations in figurine line drawing, and setting the stage for the rise of Romanesque art and, eventually, Gothic art in the West. Illuminated manuscripts, metalwork, small-scale sculpture, mosaics, and frescoes survive from the period. The Carolingians also undertook major architectural building campaigns at numerous churches in France. These include, those of Metz, Lyon, Vienne, Le Mans, Reims, Beauvais, Verdun, Saint-Germain-en-Auxerre, Saint-Pierre in Flavigny, and Saint-Denis, as well as the town centre of Chartres. The Sentula Abbey of saint Requier, Somme, completed in 788, was a major achievement in monastic architecture. Another important building mostly lost today was Theodolf's Villa, in Germigny des Prés. With the end of Carolingian rule around 900, artistic production halted for almost three generations. After the demise of the Carolingian Empire, France split into a number of feuding provinces, lacking any organized patronage. French art of the 10th and 11th centuries was produced by local monasteries to promote literacy and piety, however, the primitive styles produced were not so highly skilled as the techniques of the earlier Carolingian period. 
Multiple regional styles developed based on the chance availability of Carolingian manuscripts as models to copy, and the availability of itinerant artists. The Monastery of St. Burton became an important center under its abbot Odbert who created a new style based on Anglo-Saxon and Carolingian forms. The nearby Abbey of St. Vaast also created a number of important works. In southwestern France a number of manuscripts were produced c. 1000, at the Monastery of St. Martial in Limoges, as well as at Albi, Fijac, and St. Sever de Rustin in Gascony. In Paris a unique style developed at the Abbey of St. Germain des Prés. In Normandy a new style arose in 975. By the later 10th century with the Cluny reform movement and a revived spirit for the concept of empire, art production resumed. <laughs> Romanesque art Romanesque art refers to the art of Western Europe during a period of 150 years, from approximately 1000 AD to the rise of the Gothic style, which arose in the middle of the 12th century in France. Romanesque art was marked by a renewed interest in Roman construction techniques. For example, the 12th century capitals on the cloister of St. Guilhem le Desert adopt an acanthus leaf motif and the decorative use of drill holes, which were commonly found on Roman monuments. Other important Romanesque buildings in France include the Abbey of Saint Benoit sur Loire in Loire, the churches of Saint Foy in Conques of Aveyron, Saint Martin in Tours, Saint Philibert in Tournus of Saon et Loire, Saint Remy in Reims, and Saint Cernan in Toulouse. In particular, Normandy experienced a large building campaign in the churches of Bernay, Mont Saint Michel, Coutances Cathedral, and Bayeux. Most Romanesque sculpture was integrated into church architecture, not only for aesthetic, but also for structural purposes. Small-scale sculpture during the pre-Romanesque period was influenced by Byzantine and early Christian sculpture. Other elements were adopted from various local styles of Middle Eastern countries. Motifs were derived from the arts of the barbarian such as grotesque figures, beasts, and geometric patterns, which were all important additions, particularly in the regions north of the Alps. Among the important sculptural works of the period are the ivory carvings at the Monastery of St. Gaul. Monumental sculpture was rarely practiced separately from architecture in the pre-Romanesque period. For the first time after the fall of the Roman Empire, monumental sculpture emerged as a significant art form. Covered church facades, doorways, and capitals all increased and expanded in size and importance, as in the Last Judgment Tympanum, Beaulieu sur Dordogne, and the Standing Prophet at Moisic. Monumental doors, baptismal fonts, and candle holders, frequently decorated with scenes from biblical history, were cast in bronze, attesting to the skills of the contemporary metalworkers. Frescoes were applied to the vaults and walls of churches. Rich textiles and precious objects in gold and silver, such as chalices and reliquaries, were produced in increasing numbers to meet the needs of the liturgy, and to serve the cult of the saints. In the 12th century, large-scale stone sculpture spread throughout Europe. In the French Romanesque churches of Provence, Burgundy, and Aquitaine, sculptures adorned the facades and statues were incorporated into the capitals. Gothic. Gothic art and architecture were products of a medieval art movement that lasted about 300 years. It began in France, developing from the Romanesque period in the mid-12th century. By the late 14th century, it had evolved toward a more secular and natural style known as, International Gothic, which continued until the late 15th century, when it evolved further, into Renaissance art. The primary Gothic art media were sculpture, panel painting, stained glass, fresco, and illuminated manuscript. Gothic architecture was born in the middle of the 12th century in Ile de France, when Abbot Sugar built the abbey at Saint Denis, c. 1140, considered the first Gothic building, and soon afterward, the Chartres Cathedral, c. 1145. Prior to this, there had been no sculpture tradition in Ile de France so sculptors were brought in from Burgundy, who created the revolutionary figures acting as columns in the western royal portal of Chartres Cathedral. C. Image. It was an entirely new invention in French art, and would provide the model for a generation of sculptors. Other notable Gothic churches in France include Borges Cathedral, Amiens Cathedral, Notre Dame de Lon, Notre Dame in Paris, Reims Cathedral, the Saint-Chapelle in Paris, Strasbourg Cathedral. 
The designations of styles in French Gothic architecture are as follows, Early Gothic, High Gothic, Rayonnant, and Late Gothic or Flamboyant. Division into these divisions is effective, but debatable. Because Gothic cathedrals were built over several successive periods, and the artisans of each period not necessarily following the wishes of previous periods, the dominant architectural style often changed during the building of a particular building. Consequently, it is difficult to declare one building as belonging to certain era of Gothic architecture. It is more useful to use the terms as descriptors for specific elements within a structure, rather than applying it to the building as a whole. The French ideas spread. Gothic sculpture evolved from the early stiff and elongated style, still partly Romanesque, into a spatial and naturalistic treatment in the late 12th and early 13th century. Influences from surviving ancient Greek and Roman sculptures were incorporated into the treatment of drapery, facial expression, and pose of the Dutch Burgundian sculptor, Claus Sluter, and the taste for naturalism first signaled the end of Gothic sculpture, evolving into the classicistic Renaissance style by the end of the 15th century. Painting in a style that may be called Gothic did not appear until about 1200, nearly 50 years after the start of Gothic architecture and sculpture. The transition from Romanesque to Gothic is very imprecise and by no means clearly delineated, but one may see the beginning of a style that is more somber, dark, and emotional than the previous period. This transition occurs first in England and France around 1200, in Germany around 1220, and in Italy around 1300. Painting, the representation of images on a surface, was practiced during the Gothic period in four primary crafts, frescoes, panel paintings, manuscript illumination, and stained glass. Frescoes continued to be used as the main pictorial narrative craft on church walls in southern Europe as a continuation of early Christian and Romanesque traditions. In the north, stained glass remained the dominant art form until the 15th century. At the end of the 14th century and during the 15th century French princely courts like those of the Dukes of Burgundy, the Duke of Anjou or the Duke of Berry as well as the Pope and the Cardinals in Avignon employed renowned painters, like the Limbourg brothers, Barthélemy Dake, and Guérin Quartin or Jean Fouquet, who developed the so-called international Gothic style that spread through Europe and incorporated the new Flemish influence as well as the innovations of the Italian early Renaissance artists. Topic. Early modern period In the late 15th century, the French invasion of Italy and the proximity of the vibrant Burgundy court, with its Flemish connections, brought the French into contact with the goods, paintings, and the creative spirit of the northern and Italian Renaissance. Initial artistic changes at that time in France were executed by Italian and Flemish artists, such as Jean Clouet and his son François Clouet, along with the Italians, Rosso Fiorentino, Francesco Primaticcio, and Niccolò Delabate of what is often called the first school of Fontainebleau from 1531. Leonardo da Vinci also was invited to France by François I, but other than the paintings which he brought with him, he produced little for the French king. The art of the period from François I through Henri IV often is heavily inspired by late Italian pictorial and sculptural developments commonly referred to as mannerism, which is associated with the later works of Michelangelo as well as Parmigianino, among others. It is characterized by figures which are elongated and graceful that rely upon visual rhetoric, including the elaborate use of allegory and mythology. Perhaps the greatest accomplishment of the French Renaissance was the construction of the Chateau of the Loire Valley. No longer conceived of as fortresses, such pleasure palaces took advantage of the richness of the rivers and lands of the Loire region and they show remarkable architectural skill. <laughs> Baroque and Classicism The 17th century marked a golden age for French art in all fields. In the early part of the 17th century, late Mannerist and early Baroque tendencies continued to flourish in the court of Marie de Medici and Louis XIII. Art from this period shows influences from both the north of Europe, namely the Dutch and Flemish schools, and from Roman painters of the Counter-Reformation. Artists in France frequently debated the contrasting merits of Peter Paul Rubens with his Flemish Baroque, voluptuous lines and colors to Nicolas Poussin with his rational control, proportion, Roman classicist Baroque style. Another proponent of classicism working in Rome was Claude Gellet, known as Le Lorraine, who defined the form of classical landscape. 
Many young French painters of the beginning of the century went to Rome to train themselves and soon assimilated Caravaggio's influence like Valentin de Boulogne and Simon Vuit. The later is credited with bringing the Baroque in France and at his return in Paris in 1627 he was named first painter of the king. But French painting soon departed from the extravagance and naturalism of the Italian Baroque and painters like Eustache Le Suaire and Laurent de la Hire, following Poussin example developed a classicist way known as Parisian Atticism, inspired by antiquity, and focusing on proportion, harmony and the importance of drawing. Even Vuit, after his return from Italy, changed his manner to a more measured but still highly decorative and elegant style. But at the same time there was still a strong Caravaggisti Baroque school represented in the period by the amazing candle-lit paintings of Georges de la Tour. The wretched and the poor were featured in a quasi-Dutch manner in the paintings by the three La Nine brothers. In the paintings of Philippe de Champagne there are both propagandistic portraits of Louis XIII's minister Cardinal Richelieu and other more contemplative portraits of people in the Catholic Jansenist sect. In architecture, architects like Solomon de Brosse, François Mansart and Jacques Le Mercier helped define the French form of the Baroque, developing the formula of the urban hotel particulier that was to influence all of Europe and strongly departed from the Italian equivalent, the Palazzo. Many aristocratic castles were rebuilt in the new classic Baroque style, some of the most famous being Maisons and Chiverni, characterized by high roofs à la française, and a form that retained the medieval model of the castle adorned with prominent towers. From the mid to late 17th century, French art is more often referred to by the term classicism which implies an adherence to certain rules of proportion and sobriety uncharacteristic of the Baroque, as it was practiced in most of the rest of Europe during the same period. Under Louis XIV, the Baroque as it was practiced in Italy, was not in French taste, for instance, as Bernini's famous proposal for redesigning the Louvre was rejected by Louis XIV. Through propaganda, wars, and great architectural works, Louis XIV launched a vast program designed for the glorification of France and his name. The Palace of Versailles, initially a tiny hunting lodge built by his father, was transformed by Louis XIV into a marvelous palace for fates and parties, under the direction of architects Louis Laval who had also built the Château de vaux le vicomte and Jules Hardouin Mansart who built the Church of the Invalide in Paris, painter and designer Charles Le Brun, and the landscape architect André Le Notre who perfected the rational form of the French garden that from Versailles spread in all of Europe. For sculpture Louis XIV's reign also proved an important moment thanks to the king's protection of artists like Pierre Puget, François Girardin and Charles-Antoine Coysevox. In Rome, Pierre Legros, working in a more Baroque manner, was one of the most influential sculptors of the end of the century. <laughs> Rococo and Neoclassicism Rococo and neoclassicism are terms used to describe the visual and plastic arts and architecture in Europe from the early 18th century to the end of the 18th century. In France, the death of Louis XIV in 1715 led to a period of freedom commonly called the Regence. Versailles was abandoned from 1715 to 1722, the young King Louis XV and the government led by the Duke of Orléans residing in Paris. There a new style emerged in the decorative arts, known as rocaille. The asymmetry and dynamism of the Baroque was kept but renewed in a style that is less rhetoric and with less pompous effects, a deeper research of artificiality and use of motifs inspired by nature. This manner used to decorate rooms and furniture also existed in painting. Rocaille painting turned toward lighter subjects, like the Fates Galantes, theater settings, pleasant mythological narratives, and the female nude. Most of the times the moralizing sides of myths or history paintings are omitted and the accent is put on the decorative and pleasant aspect of the scenes depicted. Paintings from the period show an emphasis more on color than drawing, with apparent brush strokes and very colorful scenes. Important French painters from this period include Antoine Watteau, considered the inventor of the Fête Galante, Nicolas Lancret and François Boucher. The Louis XV style of decoration, although already apparent at the end of the last reign, was lighter with pastel colors, wood panels, smaller rooms, less gilding, and fewer brocades, shells, garlands, and occasional Chinese subjects predominated. The Chantilly, Vincennes and then Sèvres manufacturers produced some of the finest porcelain of the time. 
The highly skilled ebenistes, cabinet makers mostly based in Paris, created elaborate pieces of furniture with precious wood and bronze ornaments that were to be highly praised and imitated in all of Europe. The most famous are Jean-François Aubin, who created the work desk of King Louis XV in Versailles, and Bernard II van Rissenberg. Rooms in chateaux and hotels particuliers were more intimate than during the reign of Louis XIV and were decorated with rocaille-style boiseries carved wood panels covering the walls of a room conceived by architects like Germain Boffrand or Ornmanistes designers of decorative objects like just Oriel Meissonnier. The most prominent architects of the first half of the century were, apart Boffrand, Robert de Cotte and Ange Jacques Gabriel, who designed public squares like the Place de la Concorde in Paris and the Place de la Bourse in Bordeaux in a style consciously inspired by that of the era of Louis XIV. During the first half of the century, France replaced Italy as the artistic centre and main artistic influence in Europe and many French artists worked in other courts across the continent. The latter half of the 18th century continued to see French preeminence in Europe, particularly through the arts and sciences, and the speaking the French language was expected for members of the European courts. The French academic system continued to produce artists, but some, such as Jean-Honoré Fragonard and Jean-Baptiste Siméon Chardin, explored new and increasingly impressionist styles of painting with thick brushwork. Although the hierarchy of genres continued to be respected officially, genre painting, landscape, portrait, and still life were extremely fashionable. Chardin and Jean-Baptiste Audry were hailed for their still lives although this was officially considered the lowest of all genres in the hierarchy of painting subjects. One also finds in this period a pre-romanticist aspect. Hubert Robert's images of ruins, inspired by Italian Capriccio paintings, are typical in this respect as well as the image of storms and moonlight marines by Claude Joseph Vernet. So too the change from the rational and geometrical French garden of André Le Nôtre to the English garden, which emphasized artificially wild and irrational nature. One also finds in some of these gardens—curious ruins of temples—called follies. The last half of the 18th century saw a turn to neoclassicism in France, that is to say a conscious use of Greek and Roman forms and iconography. This movement was promoted by intellectuals like Diderot, in reaction to the artificiality and the decorative essence of the rocaille style. In painting, the greatest representative of this style is Jacques-Louis David, who, mirroring the profiles of Greek vases, emphasized the use of the profile. His subject matter often involved classical history such as the death of Socrates and Brutus. The dignity and subject matter of his paintings were greatly inspired by the works of Nicolas Poussin from the 17th century. Poussin and David were in turn major influences on Jean-Auguste Dominique Angra. Other important neoclassical painters of the period are Jean-Baptiste Greuze and Joseph Marie Veen. Neoclassicism also penetrated decorative arts and architecture. Architects like Ledoux and Boulet developed a radical style of neoclassical architecture based on simple and pure geometrical forms with a research of symmetry and harmony, elaborating visionary projects like the complex of the saltworks of Arc et Sinans by Ledoux, a model of an ideal factory developed from the rational concepts of the Enlightenment thinkers. <laughs> Modern period Topic: 19th century. The French Revolution and the Napoleonic Wars brought great changes to the arts in France. The program of exaltation and myth-making attendant to the Emperor Napoleon I of France was closely coordinated in the paintings of David, Gross, and Guérin. Jean Auguste Dominique Angra was the main figure of neoclassicism until the 1850s and a prominent teacher, giving priority to drawing over color. Meanwhile, Orientalism, Egyptian motifs, the tragic anti-hero, the wild landscape, the historical novel, and scenes from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance—all these elements of Romanticism—created a vibrant period that defies easy classification. The most important Romantic painter of the period was Eugène Delacroix, who had a successful public career and was the main opponent of Angra. Before him, Théodore Jericho opened the path to Romanticism with his monumental raft of the Medusa exposed at the 1819 Salon. Camille Corot tried to escape the conventional and idealized form of landscape painting influenced by classicism to be more realist and sensible to atmospheric variations at the same time. 
Romantic tendencies continued throughout the century, both idealized landscape painting and realism have their seeds in Romanticism. The work of Gustav Corbett and the Barbizon School are logical developments from it, as is the late 19th century symbolism of such painters as Gustave Moreau, the professor of Henri Matisse and Georges Rouault, as well as Odilon Redon. Academic painting developed at the École des Beaux-Arts was the most successful with the public and the state. Highly trained painters like Jean-Léon Jérôme, William Bouguereau and Alexander Cabanel painted historical scenes inspired by the antique, following the footsteps of Angra and the neoclassics. Though criticized for their conventionalism by the young avant-garde painters and critics, the most talented of the academic painters renewed the historical genre, drawing inspiration from multiple cultures and techniques, like the Orient and the new framings made possible by the invention of photography. For many critics Édouard Manet wrote of the 19th century and the modern period much as Charles Baudelaire does in poetry. His rediscovery of Spanish painting from the Golden Age, his willingness to show the unpainted canvas, his exploration of the forthright nude, and his radical brush strokes are the first steps toward Impressionism. Impressionism would take the Barbizon school one step farther, rejecting once and for all a belabored style and the use of mixed colors and black, for fragile transitive effects of light as captured outdoors in changing light partly inspired by the paintings of J. M. W. Turner and Eugene Boudin. It led to Claude Monet with his cathedrals and haystacks, Pierre-Auguste Renoir with both his early outdoor festivals and his later feathery style of ruddy nudes, Edgar Degas with his dancers and bathers. Other important impressionists were Alfred Sisley, Camille Pissarro and Gustav Keilbot. After that threshold was crossed, the next 30 years became a litany of amazing experiments. Vincent van Gogh, Dutch-born, but living in France, opened the road to Expressionism. Georges Seurat, influenced by color theory, devised a pointillist technique that governed the Impressionist experiment and was followed by Paul Signac. Paul Cézanne, a painter's painter, attempted a geometrical exploration of the world, that left many of his peers indifferent. Paul Gauguin, a banker, found symbolism in Brittany along Émile Bernard and then exoticism and primitivism in French Polynesia. These painters were referred to as post-Impressionists. Les Nabis, a movement of the 1890s, regrouping painters such as Paul Serrugier, Pierre Bonnard, Édouard Vuillard and Maurice Dennis, was influenced by Gauguin's example in Brittany. They explored a decorative art in flat planes with the graphic approach of a Japanese print. They preached that a work of art is the end product and the visual expression of an artist's synthesis of nature in personal aesthetic metaphors and symbols. Henri Rousseau, the self-taught dabbling postmaster, became the model for the naive revolution. Topic: 20th century. The early years of the 20th century were dominated by experiments in color and content that Impressionism and Post-Impressionism had unleashed. The products of the Far East also brought new influences. At roughly the same time, Les Fauves, Henri Matisse, André Durain, Maurice de Vlaminck, Albert Marquette, Raoul Duffy, Othon Fries, Charles Camoin, Henri Manguin exploded into color, much like German Expressionism. The discovery of African tribal masks by Pablo Picasso, a Spaniard living in Paris, lead him to create his Les Demoiselles d'Avignon of 1907. Working independently, Picasso and Georges Braque returned to and refined Cézanne's way of rationally comprehension of objects in a flat medium. Their experiments in cubism also would lead them to integrate all aspects and objects of day-to-day -day life, collage of newspapers, musical instruments, cigarettes, wine, and other objects into their works. Cubism in all its phases would dominate paintings of Europe and America for the next ten years. See the article on Cubism for a complete discussion. World War I did not stop the dynamic creation of art in France. In 1916 a group of discontents met in a bar in Zurich, the Cabaret Voltaire, and created the most radical gesture possible, the anti-art of Dada. At the same time, Francis Picabia and Marcel Duchamp were exploring similar notions. At a 1917 art show in New York, Duchamp presented a white porcelain urinal fountain signed R. Mutt as work of art, becoming the father of the ready-made. When Dada reached Paris, it was avidly embraced by a group of young artists and writers who were fascinated with the writings of Sigmund Freud, particularly by his notion of the unconscious mind. The provocative spirit of Dada became linked to the exploration of the unconscious mind through the use of automatic writing, chance operations, and, in some cases, altered states. 
The Surrealists quickly turned to painting and sculpture. The shock of unexpected elements, the use of frittage, collage, and decalcomania, the rendering of mysterious landscapes and dreamed images were to become the key techniques through the rest of the 1930s. Immediately after this war the French art scene diverged roughly in two directions. There were those who continued in the artistic experiments from before the war, especially Surrealism, and others who adopted the new abstract expressionism and action painting from New York, executing them in a French manner using tachism or l'art informel. Parallel to both of these tendencies, Jean Dubuffet dominated the early post-war years while exploring childlike drawings, graffiti, and cartoons in a variety of media. The late 1950s and early 1960s in France saw art forms that might be considered pop art. Yves Klein had attractive nude women roll around in blue paint and throw themselves at canvases. Victor Vassarelli invented op art by designing sophisticated optical patterns. Artists of the Fluxus movement such as Ben Vautier incorporated graffiti and found objects into their work. Nicky de saint Fal created bloated and vibrant plastic figures. Armin gathered together found objects in boxed or resin-coated assemblages, and César Baldaccini produced a series of large compressed object sculptures. In May 1968, the radical youth movement, through their Atelier Populaire, produced a great deal of poster art protesting the moribund policies of President Charles de Gaulle. Many contemporary artists continue to be haunted by the horrors of the Second World War and the specter of the Holocaust. Christian Boltanski's harrowing installations of the lost and the anonymous are particularly powerful. <inaudible> <inaudible> French and Western Art Museums of France <inaudible> In Paris Musée du Louvre Musée d'Orsay Musée National d'Art Moderne Musée de Cluny Musée d'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris Petit Palais Musée Picasso Musée Rodin Musée de Lingerie Musée Zadkine Musée Maillol Musée Bordel Musée Gustave Moreau Musée Jacquemart André Musée National Eugène Delacroix Musée National Jean-Jacques Henner Musée Marmiton Monet Musée des Arts Décoratifs, Paris Musée Nissim de Camundo Musée Cognac J Musée Carnavalet Topic. Near Paris Musée Condé in Chantilly Musée des Beaux-Arts de Chartres in Chartres Musée de la Renaissance in Écouen Musée d'Archéologie Nationale in Saint-Germain en Laye Musée Départemental Maurice Denis, the Priory, in Saint-Germain en Laye Musée d'Art et d'Archéologie de Senlis in Senlis Sèvres, Musée de la Ceramique in Sèvres Outside Paris Topic. Major museums Alphabetically by city Musée Foray in Aix-les-Bains Musée Granite in Aix and Provence Musée Toulouse-Lautrec in Albi Musée de Picardie in Amiens Musée de Laurels et de la Provence Antiques in Arles Musée du Petit Palais in Avignon Fondation Calvet in Avignon Musée Albert André in Bagnols sur Cise, Musée Bonnet in Bayonne, Musée des Beaux Arts et d'Archéologie de Besançon in Besançon, Musée Fernand Leger in Bio, Alpes Maritimes, Musée des Beaux Arts de Bordeaux in Bordeaux, Musée des Beaux Arts de Caen in Caen, Goya Museum in Castors, Musée d'Art Moderne de Serre in Serre. Musée d'Art Roger Quilliot in Clermont Ferrand, Unterlinden Museum in Colmar, Musée des Beaux Arts de Dijon in Dijon, Musée départemental d'Art Ancient et Contemporain in Epinal, Jacquemart Andre Museum in Fontaine Chalice, Musée de Grenoble in Grenoble, 
Grenoble Archaeological Museum in Grenoble Musée Matisse in Le Coteau Cambrésis Musée des Beaux Arts André Malraux in Le Havre Palais des Beaux Arts de Lille in Lille Musée des Beaux Arts de Lyon in Lyon Musée Gallo Roman in Lyon Musée des Beaux Arts de Marseille in Marseille Musée Cantini in Marseille Museums of Metz in Metz Centre Pompidou Metz in Metz Musée Angra in Montauban Musée Fabre in Montpellier Château de Montsoro Museum of Contemporary Art in Montsoro Musée des Beaux Arts de Nancy in Nancy Musée de l'École de Nancy in Nancy Musée Lorraine in Nancy Musée des Beaux Arts de Nantes in Nantes Musée des Beaux Arts in Nice Musée National Message Biblique Marc Chagall in Nice Musée Archéologique de Nimes in Nimes Musée Camille Claudel in Nogent sur Seine Musée des Beaux Arts de Reims in Reims Palais du Tau in Reims Musée des Beaux Arts de Rennes in Rennes Musée des Beaux Arts de Rouen in Rouen Musée d'Art Moderne de Saint Etienne in Saint Etienne Foundation Mate in Saint Paul, Alpes Maritimes Musée des Beaux Arts de Strasbourg in Strasbourg Musée d'Art Moderne et Contemporain of Strasbourg in Strasbourg Musée de l'Herve Notre Dame in Strasbourg, Musée des Arts Décoratifs, Strasbourg in Strasbourg, Musée des Augustins in Toulouse, Musée Saint Raymond in Toulouse, Foundation Bemberg in Toulouse. Other museums Alphabetically by city, Musée des Beaux Arts de Brest in Brest. Musée Théodore Deck et des Pays du Florival in Gebwiller Musée Historique de Haganah in Haganah Musée Eugène Boudin in Henfleur Musée Crozadier in Le Puy en Valais Musée des Beaux Arts de Libourne in Libourne Musée Girardet in Montargis Musée des Beaux Arts de Malouze in Malouze Musée des Beaux Arts de Nimes in Nimes Musée des Beaux Arts de Pau in Pau Musée Hyacinthe Rigaud in Perpignan Musée des Beaux Arts de pont aven in pont aven Le Piscine Museum in Rubai Musée Paul de Pie in Toulouse Musée des Beaux Arts de Valenciennes in Valenciennes Topic. Textile and Tapestry Museums Alphabetically by city Musée des Tapisseries in Aix and Provence, Chateau d'Angers in Angers, Musée de la Tapisserie de Bayou in Bayou, Musée des Tissus et des Arts Décoratifs in Lyon, Musée de l'Impression sur Aetifs in Mulhouse, Musée Galliera in Paris, Gobelins Manufactory in Paris, Musée du Papier Paint in Rixheim. Vocabulary French words and expressions dealing with the arts Painter — painter Painter à l'oule — oil painting Tableau — painting Toile — canvas Gravure — print Dessin — drawing Aquarelle — watercolor Croquis — sketch Ebotch — draft Crayon — pencil Paysage — landscape Nature morte — still life Le peinture de histoire — history painting, see hierarchy of genres Tapisserie — tapestry Betrayal — stained glass See also List of French artists for information about French literature, see French literature. For information about French history, see History of France. For other topics on French culture, see French culture. Topic: References and further reading. 
Anthony Blunt, Art and Architecture in France 1500-1700 ISBN 0-300-05314-2 André Chastel. French Art Vol. 1, Prehistory to the Middle Ages ISBN 2-08-013566-X André Chastel. French Art Vol. 2, The Renaissance ISBN 2-08-013583-X André Chastel. French Art Vol. 3, The Ancient Regime ISBN 2-08-013617-8. French Art at the St. Louis Art Museum. Website http colon slash slash frenchart.umsl.edu